The Justice K. Hema Committee report has uncovered some of the darkest secrets of the Malayalam film industry. And now, women of the industry have leveled sexual assault complaints against male actors, including prominent figures in the film industry. The police have registered 17 cases of sexual abuse and harassment. The governing body, the Association of Malayalam Movie Artists, or AMMA for short, the association that should have looked into all of these complaints now has its own members facing accusations of abuse. The whole body, including its president, superstar Mohan Lal, have resigned on moral grounds. Now, the HEMA committee report seems to suggest a wider circle of abusers in the industry. Is this then just a tip of the iceberg? Is this about the dirty old men of the Malayalam film industry? Is the report a battle for the soul of the industry that's been a trendsetter for Indian cinema and is there hope for reform? Joining me to discuss this are film critic Anna Vettikard and activist Brinda Adige. Welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Anna, I want to start by asking you this. You know, the, the irony of it all, an association that an acronym uh, with, with an acronym like AMMA is itself now accused of shielding some of the biggest perpetrators of this, uh, uh, you know, old, uh, uh, dirty old men, uh, this circle of abusers that this report has uh, uncovered. What are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, this is actually one of the reasons why many activists in uh, Kerala have specifically uh, been asking people not to use the acronym AMMA. Yes. Because it gives that impression of being maternalistic and, um, and uh, a guardian. And really, that's not what the role that the organization has played for a very long time. Uh, however, Sandeep, because I listened to your introduction, I want to emphasize that the Justice Hema Committee report is not only about sexual harassment and violence. Yes. This is something that the Women in Cinema Collective has emphasized repeatedly. When they asked for an expert study on the Malayalam film industry, yes. they are not looking for only investigations into possible sexual harassment and violence. Yes. They wanted to look at the underlying causes and the po they wanted to look at gender discrimination in general. And uh, sexual harassment and violence is, a, while it is a significant part of the study's report's findings, yes. it is not uh, its entirety, nor is it even 50% of it. There is a lot of space devoted in the study yes. to work conditions, pay disparities, the inequities across the industry, and gender discrimination of all sorts, including, I, I, it, there's a very beautiful section that has been authored by um, uh, Valsala Kumari, who is a retired yes. bureaucrat and one of the members of the committee, who explains in detail the sociological and political reasons why women get paid less for their work, even in a, right. in a creative field like Malayalam. Now, that uh, less pay, pay disparity means less power. It yes. also means less... Uh, also, we know that all Indian film industries write very few stories centered around women, yes. which means less women who are as big stars as the men. That again means a power inequity, which means the working conditions of the women are far poorer than that of the men. Having said that, the committee also, it could be very beneficial to men in the industry because yes. there are men also who have deposed uh, uh, before it and yes. spoken about their own problems. So it's a very wide ranging study. Absolutely. Sexual harassment and violence is of course an important part of it, but it's not its entirety. It's not, absolutely Anna. In fact, uh, it's one of the most comprehensive reports of the kind. I don't recall reading a report of this nature which not only talks about, of course, sexual harassment is the most extreme end of this, but you know, the wider uh, ramifications of uh, working conditions like you mentioned and the fact that it also talks a lot about the Indian film industry in general, which has very, very poor representation of uh, female directors, producers, scriptwriters, and technicians across the industry. So it's actually something that's a wake up call for not just Malayalam cinema, but also for the rest of the industry. But, uh, you know, I want to ask uh, uh, Brinda this. Brinda, you've been covering this for a couple of years now, this whole progress of the uh, very, very disturbing allegations against a very leading star of the Malayalam film industry in 2017, who was also incidentally uh, a member, or he was the treasurer of the AMMA. Had it not been for that one sensational case in 2017, would all of these allegations have been brushed under the carpet 
you know, this all began with that case in 2017, and after which you had this committee set up, you had them doing all these depositions, interviewing members of the film industry. How important was that incident from 2017, seven years ago? There is no doubt that that was a very, very important, uh, you know, sad to say, an incident where the victim survivor chose to come out and yes. speak. We are largely a patriarchal country, so silencing the woman is a given. There is no way, it does not matter which strata, which section, which religion, which caste one belongs to. Women must be silenced and a right. woman who speaks up is always pointed out to be told as a troublemaker, yes. as somebody we must stay far away from. Now that done, uh, if somebody is branded like that, then there is a lot of other uh, ramifications and consequences yes. because they will not get a job. They won't be easily called for any other assignments. And right. people will try that the scripts might change and say, okay, she's dead now, you put somebody else. Yes. So there we have seen that this is a culture of silence that has continuously been promoted yes. and let us put on record. That case is very important. But whatever has come out from the Justice uh, Hema Committee report is across India. Yes. No film industry can claim to be holier than thou right. or say that any one part of that report doesn't affect them or is not part of their industry. Yes. And that said, the 2017 case, we know what all went went through it and what happened to the actor also. Yes. And the, the, the kind of uh, malign, the character assassination, uh, the statements made not only by men, but yes. women also made those statements using words like uh, compromises. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, you behave to be available. So we are a patriarchal country. Yes. Conditioned by patriarchy with a gendered language that men and women both have no qualms continuously using it in the in all of those in that light you see that the justice uh, uh, hema committee yes. is a torchbearer it's a it torchbearer indeed blazer. brinda yes it's a trailblazer and it's a report of the kind that we should have had many years ago and in fact i'm going to ask anna this anna you you're a film critic you're a film scholar who's covered the entire indian film industry not just the so-called Bollywood in, based in Bombay, but also the southern film industry. How rampant is this in other industries as well? The point that Brinda made is that it could be any industry in the country today. It could be Bollywood, it could be the Bengal film industry as well. How much of this is known? How much of a, you know, a, a conspiracy of silence is there in the other industries for this to not come out? I'm so glad Brinda made this point because the fact is that if any industry tries to act holier than thou, they, it, they, it needs to be pointed out to them that there is no Indian film industry yes. that is free of the conditions and the violence and the harassment that women have spoken of to the Justice Hema Committee. The difference between the Malayalam film industry and the rest of the country is that one woman a very famous woman actor yes. immediately after a crime decided to file a police complaint. Yes. Because of that one woman, the women of the Malayalam film industry banded together and formed a collective. Yes. That is the big difference between Malayalam and the rest of the country. Because they brand banded together, and you know what, I think the government and the industry thought this is just a sweet photo op for all of them and yes. these cute little girls will get tired of fighting after a while. But the thing about the Women in Cinema Collective headquartered yes. in Kerala is that they refused to give up. They were right. unrelenting. Even after the Justice came, a KHEMA committee was formed, you know that the, the, the committee submitted its findings in 2019 and for five years the government yes. sat up those findings. And I am so glad the whole, just as that one woman gave courage to the women of the Malayalam film industry and the women in cinema collectives courage has given, uh, has given courage to other women and even men in the Malayalam yes. film industry. I can see that the Bengal film industry's women yes. are now speaking out. 
Right. Of course, challenges are bigger uh, for women of the Hindi, Telugu and Tamil industries in the sense that because yes. they are bigger industries, they have more money to spend on PR and marketing. Yes. Therefore, powerful men in those industries have more money to spend on agents who will coach them on how to be more sophisticated yes. in the way they approach women and in their public statements, even about the Hema committee. Having said that, if you've noticed, yes. it is women of Bengal who've spoken up, but the men of all the big industries are silent. And I can tell you, because I have, like you said, I've covered all of these industries. Yes. They are afraid that because it'll take just one woman speaking out in one of the big industries for again, there to be another ripple effect. And the men of the big industries of Kerala, of India, the big film industries are all afraid right now. Everything described in the HEMA committee report, I can yes. tell you, is happening in all the other industries also. Absolutely. I and mean, that's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, a, a shocking statement indeed. And it's it's a truth. If you look at the report, uh, what it suggests that this could actually be universal across film industries in India. But, you know, Anna, there have been two very important actors who have uh, spoken out in the Malayalam film industry as well. Uh, Prithvi Raj Sukumaran has come out and he's spoken in favor of the women who've uh, registered those complaints and of course Tovino Thomas has spoken out as well which actually leads me to believe that there is possibly a generational divide uh, in the Malayalam film industry itself because a lot of the actors who are accused the 17 cases many of them are against the old you know film industry of Kerala men who are in their 50s and 60s who've been around for two or three decades and the younger actors seem to have come out and spoken more openly. Do you believe that's the case, Anna, in the Malayalam film industry? Is that there's a generational divide in the way the young industry looks at it and vis-a-vis -vis the old, old guard looks at it? I actually do not think that there's a generational divide. Uh, Prithviraj Sukumaran and Tovino Thomas have been uh, supporters of the Women in Cinema Collective yes. and the survival in the 2017 case from the beginning. Yes. I do want to call out Prithviraj on one thing though. While he was he welcomed the findings of the HEMA committee this uh, this month, he felt the need to emphasize that if there are false cases, then of course action should be taken against the women who do uh, who file false cases. When right. we know that the world over, this bogey of false cases is yes. raised to intimidate women and t tell them that they could be punished if they are not able to pro provide proof for right. crimes that are in any case usually committed behind closed doors and that are always difficult to prove. And we also know that false cases are a tiny percentage yes. of the sexual crimes reported in this world. But patriarchal men persist in highlighting those all the time just to create doubt about women in general. Having right. said that, Prithvi Raj has been an avid supporter of WCC for a while. They, the yes. WCC themselves have spoken out and said so. I don't think there's a generational divide as much as the fact that men of an earlier generation knew they could get away with things right. a little more easily than men of the present generation because women of the present generation have more platforms on which yes. to speak out. There are laws that are stronger. So I don't think that Tovino and Prithvi Raj support should be taken as representative of the entire young brigade in the film industry because there are many, for instance, young yes. filmmakers, young male filmmakers in Kerala making extremely regressive anti-women misogynistic films yes and uh, so yes I would not give the entire generation the benefit of the doubt Prithvi and Tovino yes um, right. I appreciate uh, everyone should appreciate allyship but again first and foremost it is the bravery the courage and the unity of the women of the women in cinema collective that has resulted in everything that we are seeing right now that has to be underlined first and foremost absolutely i mean it's a one of a kind organization and uh, anna possibly this the you bollywood never had a wcc despite all the complaints that came out many years ago in 2017 so brinda you know uh, the fact that the report also mentions the possibility of the women of the wcc being targeted you know, by not giving them work, by sidelining them, by dropping them from projects. Do you see that happening? Do you see the industry kind of, you know, coming together in this thing of solidarity, this, the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, dirty old men club, if you can call it that, waiting for the storm to pass and then kind of, you know, uh, working against the WCC? Or do you think it's now too big for them to even uh, attempt that? 
well, I would like to think that it is too big for them to attempt that, but we know, like Anna pointed out, they are very powerful, they are moneyed. Yes. And right now we know that they have the prerogative and the kind of influence that they can wield to say, okay, these are people we do not want in our projects and they can give you n number of very, very justifiable reasons. But that said, we now want to ask whether other women will fall prey to something like this. Right, right. Will there be a possibility that they all come together under the WCC and say that you cannot pick and choose people hmm. who may not call out, who may not stand up and who may not voice out. That is asking for utopia, but I'm sure because today women know that we must come together yes. if we have to fight this eons old uh, patriarchal shattering battle. So, and, and here we also want to talk about the kind of behavior, the resources, the infrastructure and everything that must be provided. So women who might get chosen or selected must understand that they might be at loss of all of that, including uh, higher pay uh, grades and uh, whatever that other their male counterparts are getting. So if everybody is there together, I'm sure they might be able to get the most optimum and best of it. That said, we must also place the onus on the state. The report is there, right. cases are being registered, and like Anna pointed out, there are almost all of them coming out and saying that, you know, we'll go to court because of maligning my character, we'll do this. All those threats will continue. Yes. And that is why it is important that as soon as the police register the FIR, the victim and the witness protection scheme is coming into play. Otherwise, what you mentioned, not only jobs over here, but yes. wherever they might have the connections, those jobs may be at stake. Right, absolutely. And uh, it's so important that you highlighted the role of the Women in Cinema Collective because we forget that it was actually civil society and indeed the brave women of the WCC that fought this battle for so many years and resulted in w what we see today, the report being uh, made public. But Anna, you're a film scholar. Give us the big picture now. How do you see this playing out in the next couple of months? Do you see the ripple effect of what the WCC has fought, this battle that they've fought, this very extraordinary battle that they've fought in the Malayalam film industry, actually rippling through the other film industries as well, that predators in other industries are now going to be on their guard, say that, listen, you know, tomorrow they might come for me. Or is it going to be business as usual? Give us your take on this. I don't think I can make a prediction on this because we know that patriarchy worldwide is about men, clo powerful men closing ranks, yes. along with, of course, the support of a few women enablers and supporting each other. Uh, in situations like this. And you need look no further than the Me Too movement in the United States, which yes. began in Hollywood in October 2017, a few months after the Women in Cinema Collective was formed in Kerala. Yes. Uh, please go back to an article in The Atlantic, uh, which was uh, published on the first anniversary of the Me Too movement. It was published in 2018, October, and the headline was The Men of Me Too Go Back to Work. Right. Apart from Harvey Weinstein, yes. who has faced consequences, who are the others whose careers you see completely ruined despite numerous women coming out and speaking of the violence that they have inflicted on their women colleagues? They're just going about business as usual. And uh, so the reason why, uh, I think the reason why uh, WCC has been able to stick around and make a difference is, A, of course, the women in that group are just incredible. Bina Paul, Didi Damodrin, yes. Asha Archie Joseph, Sajita Martal, Reema Parvati. I, I can't name all of them. They are incredibly courageous. They have lost work. It's not, this is not speculation. They have come on the record and said in the past seven years that they have lost work for speaking out. But they stuck together. And second, the media and uh, the society in Kerala, whatever their flaws might be, by and large, they stood by the women. There has been public support. Initially, the government supported WCC. When it seemed like the government is not, the public continued to support them. Right. So, you know, while it's about brave women, the fact is that the onus cannot be placed on women. Society and the media have to support them. So the question is, 
is the media going to support women in the Hindi film industry, the Telugu industry and the Tamil industry or Marathi or any of the others if the biggest of names are named yes. and we, we, men we grew up loving yes. turn out to be sexual predators turn out yeah you know as someone who's observed the industry from behind i can tell you that there are many who are known to be but they're known to be behind the scenes yes. will the public support women who speak out against publicly against the most beloved stars of yes. india's beloved industries in the way kerala society has stood by the women of the women in cinema collective that's the question i honestly cannot make a prediction but i do know that the men of these industries are a little scared that there's a possibility of the status quo changing, which is why they are silent. Right. Do you see the difference, Sandeep? Yes. A doctor is raped and murdered in Kolkata and yes. doctors across the country are protesting. A HEMA committee report comes out on the Malayalam film industry's women's plight. And where are the film personalities across the rest of the country? Why are they silent? Why are they not expressing solidarity with their women colleagues in the Malayalam yes. film industry? You and I know why they are not, because they're afraid that if they do that, then we will ask questions to them also. Absolutely. So I can make a prediction, but I hope. We live in hope, Anna. And uh, the conspiracy of silence as you spoke, that's something that we're going to keep coming back to. But we were talking about Mollywood's dirty old men, and indeed the dirty old men, this cabal of power that's been exposed by the HEMA committee report has been uh, has finally met its match in the brave women of the WCC. We'll have to wait and watch if this movement spreads across the country as Brinda Adige and Anna Vettikart have been telling us this evening. But thank you very much, ladies, for joining us on this very burning topic of the dirty old men in the Malayalam film industry and possibly across India as well. Thanks very much.